Good morning and welcome to the Killick and Co market update. We're into a new quarter, but it has to be said that September was not a good month for global markets. In fact, it was the worst month that we've had since March. Here's a chart showing the S&P 500 over the last year. And as you can see, the index hit a new record high early in September, but then it went on to lose over 5% of its value. Possible reasons include concerns over a second wave of the coronavirus, but it's also true that markets are starting to get a little bit concerned about the upcoming US election, which is now just under one month away. And sadly, the debate that took place this week between Trump and Biden did very little to inspire confidence in either potential leader. There are also growing concerns about possible fraud in postal voting, and Trump is even claiming that he might refuse to leave the White House even if he doesn't win the election. Arguably, the worst possible result for markets would be a very, very close election result, because this would probably lead to a recounting and audit process that could be quite lengthy, and that would leave the US without a clear president for a certain period of time. It really does feel as though US markets are on tenterhooks waiting for the result of this election. And in the meantime, markets are being called down this afternoon, following the news that Donald Trump has been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The metals and mining sector has been performing well since 2015, as you can see by this chart here. We've got the MSCI World Index in green and the MSCI Metals and Mining Index in blue. As you can see, the mining sector had a really tough time following the financial crisis, followed by a recovery, but then followed by several years of very steady decline. There were a number of reasons for this decline. One, there was too much supply of key commodities, which led to falling prices. There was also softening demand from China, which is responsible for a significant proportion of global commodities demand. And there was also concern from investors about the high levels of debt that some major commodities companies had built up. However, since 2015, the fortunes of the sector have very much improved. A lot of these companies have tried very hard to lower their levels of debt, for example, by reducing dividends and by making disposals. And there's also been renewed interest in certain commodities. More recently, there has been an expectation that governments around the world might borrow to spend heavily on infrastructure as a way to boost their economies following the coronavirus. And there's also an expectation that the world will transition quickly towards renewable power, and that will require different types of commodities, which could potentially be good news for the mining sector. Please do give us a call if you'd like to hear more about our latest thoughts on the mining and commodity sectors. And finally this week, fears for UK unemployment are growing as the furlough scheme draws to a close. From the first of this month, employers will have to pay a greater proportion of employees' wages, and at the end of this month, the scheme will end altogether. Since 2011, UK unemployment has been declining steadily, and as you can see by this chart, the latest reading was just over 4%. However, the Bank of England has predicted that this rate could more than double once the furlough scheme ends, and that's why the government is currently trying to advertise various different opportunities for people to retrain, in hopes that that will bring down the level of employment over the longer term. Moving on to take a look at the diary for next week, we've got results out from Tesco and from Delta Airlines. That's it from us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.